Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my review of the Caddx Rattel camera. The Rattel is an interesting camera to me because I've been using the Runcam Eagle line of cameras. The main reason I use the Eagle is because I fly at night a lot. There aren't a lot of options for cameras that work good at night. The Eagle has basically been the best night FPV camera available for a long time. So it's kind of cool to see somebody else coming in and incorporating some of the main features of the Eagle, which make it fly great at night. For reference here, I've got some Eagle night footage. I mean, it's really, really clear at night. It's really easy to see. Night, it's pretty much perfect. During the day, the dynamic range is not super awesome in the daytime. Cameras like the Predator and, and some other CMOS FPV cameras do really well with dynamic range. The Eagle, unfortunately, doesn't. It's still a good camera for during the day. It's just not the best. There's also this white flash issue that the Eagle cameras are prone to. And you can kind of fix that. You can turn your max gain down, but it's basically what happens is when you do a flip or a roll and like the sun comes into view, the whole camera will flash white for, I don't know, long enough that it's annoying. The field of view is not very wide. In four by three, it's kind of narrow to be honest. So if you're using four by three goggles and you, or you use the camera in four by three mode, your field of view is, yeah, it's definitely by today's standards on the, the narrow side. The Eagle's also very expensive. And when you look at these two cameras on paper, it's very obvious that Caddx went directly after the Runcam Eagle. Let's take a look at the specs. They both have the same ridiculously large one over one eighth inch CMOS sensor. That's the defining hardware feature of the Eagle. I don't know if they're using the exact same sensor, but it's a very large sensor. Basically, these are the only two FPV cameras to have a sensor anywhere near that large. Minimum illumination, the Rattel has uh, 0.001 lux, where the Eagle comes in at 0.001 lux. So both of them have great low light sensitivity. I guess on paper, the Rattel is better. As far as field of view goes for the 2.1 millimeter lens, the Rattel lists the field of view as 160 degrees. They don't specify whether that's for four by three or 16 by nine, the camera is switchable, uh, four by three, 16 by nine. Based on my experience, I think that it's actually 160 degrees in four by three. So it would be wider technically in 16 by nine. The Micro Eagle comes in at 140 degrees for four by three and 170 degrees for 16 by nine. It's definitely, the Caddx is definitely wider than 140. So I don't know if it's, you know, 160, up for four by three or not I'm, i have no way of verifying that it doesn't really say anywhere on caddx's website but it's wider than the eagle we'll put it that way we'll leave it at that the Rattel is slightly smaller and lighter at eight grams versus the 8.9 grams of the eagle and we'll take a look at that in a second and as far as price goes 34 bucks for the for this version there's a, a cheaper and a more expensive one depending on the lens and the options you choose we'll get to that in a sec 34 dollars for the 2.1 Rattel, 45 dollars for the micro eagle the Rattel wins out there and I want to talk about the lens options because this is, in my opinion, where the Rattel maybe starts to kind of go off the tracks a little bit. With the Eagle, you have one lens. Basically, when you buy an Eagle, there's only one lens option. And that lens and the firmware settings and the sensor, you know, they're they're matched up in a, in a pretty good way. You're generally going to get a, big, a good picture out of it. Combination of the sensor lens and the firmware works well together. Canix may have had some issues here when trying to figure out about the lens. They're offering three different lens options. The 2.1 lens, and then there's another option with a 2.1 lens with a nd8 filter then there's a 180 degree lens that they call large angle that's a 1.66 millimeter lens i don't have a 1.66 i avoided the 1.66 because recommended lens for quote unquote night vision is 2.1 and 
that's my primary concern. So that's the one I've got. The fact that you're having to list one of your lenses for night vision and then also saying for jello free recording, uh, you want to use the same lens, but there's an ND8 filter that they give you along with it, which is basically to me admitting that, you know, while the night vision lens, a 2.1 lens might work it at night, maybe there's issues with jello during the day. Obviously, Caddx thinks, thinks so because they're offering an option with an ND8 filter and calling that the jello free version. I don't know why they just couldn't find one lens that worked for both. Uh, the, the Eagle does that just fine. I don't know. And then the third option is the 180 large angle. I mean, I guess if you, you just wanted the really wide angle, I'm used to the Eagle, so I don't want a super wide lens. Let's take a look what comes in the box. I'm sure it's going to just be the standard stuff. We've got our yeah, little joystick dongle to control the settings and a harness and junky bracket that nobody ever uses. Looks like it's a little bit smaller than the, the Eagle overall, which is you know, a good thing. Got your pin out on the back, uh, 5 to 40 volts. Yeah, the Eagle is a little bit... I guess deeper in the, in the on the back side behind the screw hole, so it will stick in a little bit closer to your your stack inside your quad, you know, racing quad or something. The back of the camera can you know uh, come up against the edge of the stack. The size is is nice. The camera looks like it's put together overall pretty well. I mean, it's really not much different than any other kind of camera in this class. So let's take a look at some of the footage. Let's check out. Daytime. This is me just messing around with launch mode and beta flight 4.0. Yeah, there's a little bit of jello and vibration here, but you know, this is like uh you know crazy. You don't normally do that. You see, once I slow down and kind of fly normally, the jello goes right away. No real terrible noticeable jello. The the color saturation, like I said, is is better than the Eagle. It might seem like too much in the, the DVR footage. It looks better in the goggles. I know the sky looks a little purple and the props look like super duper like um you know neon pink or whatever. But I actually enjoyed the image quite a bit. And I, I will say that um you know because of the lack of the shimmering effect and the, the better color and this this is actually maybe a better camera uh for daytime than the eagle you know you have the better hdr better color less shimmering i'd have to fly it in a few more different daytime conditions but yeah i was i was actually enjoying this you know during the day quite a bit um you don't have to deal with the white flashing from the eagle As far as you know, the 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 rapid fire goes. I did have, um, and you might have noticed if you if you watch through the clips carefully. More than I do on the Eagle, I was having issues with rapid fire mode one, kind of maintaining a lock, and you know, getting these moments where the lock was kind of going willy nilly. Uh, one time, I had it really bad where I lost a lock, and the image was rolling for like four or five seconds. I know rapid fire has got some some firmware out there to kind of help alleviate that. It's not really the fault of the rapid fire. It has to do with when the cameras don't operate like 100% on spec. The output spec for like NTSC or PAL or, or whatever it is. And fortunately with, with, with Caddx, like you're kind of more likely, I think, to have those kind of issues with rapid fire than you would with a run cam product. You can... I guess set your rapid fire to mode two if you want to avoid it happening. It really only happened here and there, but when it did happen, it was was kind of annoying. The other convenience kind of thing with the Rattel, you know, one of the things I like about the Eagle, I use all the flight controls I use have the camera control pads built on, so I just wire the OS, you know, the little joystick wire from the camera up to the flight controller, and then I can use my sticks to control the camera settings. Uh, on the Rattel, it did not work for me. I did go and try a bunch of different resistance settings and looked at some other settings that work for some other Caddx cameras, but it I could not get the camera control working, which kind of stinks. And as uh, I would like to spend more time kind of maybe trying to figure out the menus that there's some better settings in here, but it's so annoying to sit there with a little joystick and the quad plugged in versus 
instead of you sitting there with the transmitter and your goggles on and you know really being able to kind of see what's going on and conveniently change the settings so that's unfortunate if anybody figures out how to get camera control working on this camera please in beta flight please let me know um because i really really enjoy that that convenience i really hate messing with a little joystick and yeah so bottom line um overall i i I don't think this is a bad camera. I think the Eagle is still slightly better. Definitely at night, the Eagle is better. Maybe this camera might be a little bit better during the day. I think it's really come to, gonna come down to, you know, do you want a slightly smaller camera uh, with a little bit wider field of, uh, with a little bit wider field of view than the Eagle? Um, then this is gonna be the way to go. Or maybe, you know, you're more worried about breaking the camera. Uh, with the Eagle, it's, it's proven, you know what you get. It's stable. Um, it works in almost every situation. Like I said, some cameras, no camera is perfect, but you know, for the first time here, we have a camera that you know can kind of compete with the Eagle. So hopefully, they'll make some improvements as we move along here. The Eagle, you know, that you had Eagle version one, then version two, and you know, the Pro and the Micro, the Micro are like basically version three, I think, of the Eagle. So um, they have had a chance to kind of refine, you know. Um, that camera over uh, i guess a number of years and this is cadex's first shot at this style of camera so uh, we'll see what happens moving forward but uh yeah i i think this is definitely if you don't want to shell out the 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 extra money for the eagle or like i said if you want a wider angle than the eagle or you want you know, maybe better dynamic range and daytime performance but still have that nice bright image at night then the Rattel is definitely you know um an option uh, do I fully recommend it? Not really. I wish, you know, I think it needs to be polished a little bit more and improved a little bit more. But, um, yeah, I, I, I did buy a second one, and I am using these in, um, you know, where I want a little bit of a wider viewing angle or, you know, uh, just to mess around with. The day, the daytime, I will say, is, is actually I really, really enjoyed, you know, the way the camera looks during the day. Uh, if it's by far far and away the second best nighttime camera out there you know the eagle and the Rattel are kind of in a class you know way above everything else so if you like caddix or any of those things sound good to you this may you know be the way to go for you all right so let's check out the nighttime right off the bat the the first thing is it's definitely bright enough to fly at night yeah, the low light sensitivity is definitely there. There is a lot of grain or, you know, no, not um, noise in the sense of electrical noise, but, you know, like noise, like when you've got the ISO set up too high in a camera, it doesn't kill it, but it's definitely got this kind of like graininess that the Eagle doesn't have. And the there's less of that shimmering effect that I know people complain about on the Eagle. So um, that's good. I'm going to try to mess around with the settings here in a second. These are the, the stock settings. The only thing I changed out of the box, it does um, it does come default as PAL, so I just changed it to NTSC. Other than that, it's all the stock settings. So um, definitely wider than the Eagle, as you can see, and bright enough to fly at night. Just a little bit, and, you know, it kind of depends on... Um, you know, like right here, it looks really like the, the green does go away. I guess as the exposure algorithm changes or whatever, it's just, you know, certain you know, when the lighting is, is just right, it's a little bit grainy if you look up towards the sky or, or some of the 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 lights, you can you can see it. But not, not bad. I, I still think I prefer the eagle a little bit better at night. Here we go in the menus. Um, what I'm doing here is trying to and this is i don't like the menu system here and there's a lot of options but either they seem to do nothing or they seem to just make the picture quality worse um so here i am like a like an idiot messing around with the uh the noise reduction you can see like when i turn it to manual the graininess goes away so that's good the problem is you can't actually fly <laughs> with this setting as i'm going to find out here in a second there's like all this smearing that goes on and i did later on and i'll show it here but try uh manual low manual settings for the the three the 3d nr which is i think stands for 3d noise reduction and even at very low settings you can feel like a weird latency or something so i guess the 
just not enough uh, processing power on board for you to really use that. And that, that's that's a shame because on the Eagle, you have 2, D, two DNR, which cleans up the image a lot better. It looks more like this right here. But uh, unfortunately, you know, this DNR doesn't really work right. It's either grainy or laggy. So, yeah, that's too bad. Um, I also tried messing around with some of the the other settings, but there's really not much in here that you can you know look i mean that here's the the gain settings which on the eagle are nice it's just one gain slider and you move it up or down and you can see a difference with this i don't know yeah i tried a bunch of different settings here it didn't really seem to help too much so getting back to what i was saying earlier about the you know the polish or um you know that maybe in a in the next version of this camera they'll they'll have the firmware in better shape they'll get this a little bit more fine tuned for the combination of the lens and the sensor they're using but uh right now it's kind of funky you have a lot more options than you do with the eagle but unfortunately like the options just don't seem to do much and yeah here's me trying to fly with like that 3d and r setting high and it's just it's it, i yeah, you can you can see already it's all messed up so that didn't go so well. And I'm just gonna let the uh, footage play here a little bit so you can see some more. All right guys, thanks for watching, have a good one. I'll catch you next time. About some things I shouldn't say. What if Kurt's wild doesn't make it? What if all the switches get stuck on the stroke? When the shuttle goes, we won't take it. Final cabin measures are deployed All we'll have is all this time All we'll have is all this time All this time Reds for fall Sisters and